Welcome to CycloneFanatic.com. I'm Chris Williams, back at Mr. B's, as we do each and every week, joined by my good friend Tim Sitzman. Tim, pretty good week for Cyclone Athletics, my man. Yeah, it was a great week, and what a what a fun week. And, you know, not only that, Chris, we had a great week at the store, and, hey, I, I'm still about doing business, so it was kind of fun. <laughs> doing some wrapping yet? Do, doing you? some wrapping. You know, the holiday season is upon us, and for you Cyclone fans out there, uh, come in and buy your favorite person a gift. We'd love to have you. We're doing a lot of Christmas wrapping and holiday holiday cheer around here at Mr. B's, so love to see you. I used to work at a clothing store, and the gift wrapping was a serious issue for me. You know, I'm an ace there. I, You're an ace? I, I, I'm the right. fastest gift wrapper you'd ever want to see, so I like really? that, like people to come in and experience uh, our service and uh, in a fun atmosphere here at uh, Mr. B's, and uh, as as in the clone world, uh, uh, we, we dress success, and, and we've had some great success this season at, uh, at Iowa State, and Proud of proud of everything that Coach Rose has accomplished this year. Oh, it's just been an outstanding year. Come stop by Mr. B's, 1995 Northwest 86th Street in Clive. Well, uh, as we mentioned, the football team got a win. The basketball team beat up on Drake the other yeah, night. They which... sure did. What a what a fine team that um, Mr. McDermott has put on the oh. floor. Wow, it, it could be an exciting year. They have athletes this year. Yeah, it's they been sure do. Pretty fun to watch. Iowa State will continue on their basketball season this Sunday. And the following Tuesday, a couple games in the little uh, pre-Chicago Invitational shouldn't be much of a problem for the Clones. But the big one coming up on Saturday, Tim, Iowa State at Missouri. And here's a Missouri team who kind of uh, what the Big 12 North's been all about this year. They come and beat Kansas State and kind of open some eyes in Manhattan last weekend. Um, what do you think of this matchup for Iowa State? You know, the the North uh, has just been kind of a Jekyll and Hyde out there. You just don't know <laughs> week to week who's going to win, who's going to lose. Here's a Nebraska team that the Clones handled pretty pretty well, not very well, but well, they got by. It. They got by, they you know, it. and we loved it at, at that time. And they're sitting there with a real good chance of winning the North, and I think the Clones got a real good chance of winning on Saturday. You, so you think so? I, I think it's going to be really, really close. I think uh, mm -hmm. Missouri's got a, a – a lot to play for. They they want bowl eligibility. They want to play on. Mm -hmm. And uh, but I kind of look for a, a a field goal to do it. You think you got Iowa State by field? Goal. I got Iowa State by three. You know I think it's going to be fairly low scoring. I I, I think it's like a. A 17-14 ball game. Wow. Okay. Well, I like your optimism. Yeah. Uh, well, you got to stay optimistic with what he's done up there, and I, I think we got good chance. All right. I like his optimism. Unfortunately, I think I'm going to have to go the other way. Oh, I, th I thought you might. Uh, I just thought people you... are throwing stuff at the camera right well, now. Well, it, it was tough for me, but I got to stay optimistic. Hey, I, I like the way you're doing things. I just I look at this matchup. It, it's really tough for me because Missouri has a really good run defense. That's what Iowa State's good at. They have a really bad pass defense. Well, Iowa State's not so good at passing the football on offense this year. And then you turn things around. A uh, young man by the name of Denario Alexander at Missouri has just been going off for the last two weeks. I mean, he is just outstanding. Uh, Blaine Gabbard, I believe, is finally healthy at the quarterback position for the Missouri Tigers. And it, here's the deal. Iowa State's defense has just blown people away this year. You know, Unbelievable! I don't think I don't think the fan base expected them to be no. that good. Well, and they, we expected them to be the weak link of the team. Absolutely, and they've held it together. They it, really have. Look at the Nebraska win; it was all turnovers. It, I mean, it's how they do it. And last week as well. Absolutely, you know, taking the ball away from the Buffaloes, and now you have an offense that can't score. It seems yeah, it like seems like they've kind of gotten a little soft. And I've thought for the last two weeks, okay, this is Iowa State's breakout week. Uh, the timing's going to be back. The offensive line's going to look like the line they were a month ago. Mm -hmm. I, I've kind of lost faith. I'm not saying it's not going to happen. I just don't know if it's going to happen against this Missouri Tiger football team who is so good against stopping the run. Uh, just, I just don't believe Iowa State's passing game can get uh, can get clicking unless Alexander Robinson runs for 125 yards. That's the fear I have going into Saturday. Well, not to lose my optimism, I certainly, <laughs> I certainly think everything that you've said is is true. And the Jekyll and Hyde of the, of the uh, Big 12 North certainly could come to play, and Missouri could blow us out. I think yeah. they have the capability. They have the talent on that team to have won the North, and they've mm -hmm. had some, some injuries and some difficulties through the season. But I, I just have a good feeling about the Cyclones and how they want to finish the year, mm -hmm. and they're they're really wanting to take Coach Rhodes to his uh, Coach Rhodes to his first bowl game, and and I think that that'd be exciting. That's the kicker here for me. That's what makes it hard because there's the Rhodes factor. Uh, there's a Rhodes factor there, mm -hmm. and, and uh, you know Coach Rhodes has just put something into that team that I think we haven't seen for quite some time, and it, it's refreshing for the state of Iowa and what's going on in this state as far as athletics mm -hmm. is concerned for 
for what we have, we have a lot to be thankful for. Yeah, and they always say, too, when teams go on the road, they kind of adopt the personality of their head coach. Well, I think that that's been very true this year. Iowa State picked up a couple road wins. It used to be when the clones went on the road, just check it off as a loss, no matter who the opponent was. That's just not the case anymore. Just just not the case. You know, there's still we still have a, a big hurdle in, in Missouri, and I, I think it's really – I'm hoping that my prediction is true and my optimism, but uh, certainly a good team down uh, down south of us there, and, and, mm-hmm. and I hope that uh, – that that road victory kind of thing. I think we've got over that stigma of not being able to win on the road. Uh, I think that you're 100% correct. Tim picks the Cyclones to win. I'm going to take Missouri along the lines of a 30 to 14 score. Wow, you got big offense. Uh, it, yeah, and I, I it, it pains me to do yeah, that. I understand. It pains me to do that, but that's just that's how I see this thing playing out. Uh, and then we're going to be talking on Sunday bull possibilities. It's six and six. Does that get you into a bowl game? I, for one, believe it will. I saw USA Today didn't have Iowa State projected into a bowl game. But uh, this is the same type of publication that has Kansas State in one, which means they would anticipate Kansas State beating Nebraska on Saturday, which I don't think happening. Did you know that? Kansas State, they have six wins, but they have to win seven. They have to win seven, yes. Yeah. And yeah. a lot of these bowl projections out there, I don't think realize that. I know. I've and seen three or four of them that have Kansas State in a bowl game, but it's just like, well, so you think they're going to beat the Huskers? Yet they still have Nebraska playing in the Big 12 championship game, which just doesn't make any sense. Yeah, and this this time of year for football fans, and, and, and right now uh, with ISU fans, it's, it's really fun time of year. You know, anticipation of uh, carrying the season on a little while, let those players get a little more experience so that they're ready for next year. It's very, very important, and and uh, there's just a lot of possibilities right there. The shakeup has to happen in the next couple of weeks, and it boils down to uh, what we all like in football. It's it, this is a fun time of year. It is nice. I say we go someplace warm and get a tan. <laughs> it would be. It, it's nice to see the Cyclones progress, and I think what what he's plugging in for next year and the recruits that we got coming. I I think that we're going to be talking bowl for a long time. I hope so. I think that the program's being set up for a long term run. Hey Tim, I'm going to invite everybody to Mr. B's here on 1995 Northwest 80. Sixth Street and Clive to t- test your gift wrapping ability. It, I, I'd invite them to come and see how fast I can do it and how good looking it is. We'd love to have you come in, and uh, it's exciting to have uh, all you Cyclone fans stop in and see Mr. B's on 1995 Northwest 86th, and and we'll look forward to it. All right, thanks, Tim. Thanks. Hope your prediction comes true, man. Yeah, I do too. And let's have a victory next time we talk. All right, all right. sounds good. Buddy. Even though you didn't pick them, I'm with you. Hey, then you'll I, be the good guy. I, I, I'm the optimist here. You're the optimist. <laughs> I'm the pessimist, and hopefully the optimism wins. Let's out. see how we do. All right, sounds good. Tim Sitzman here at Mr. B's. I'm Chris Williams for CycloneFanatic.com.